Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Natalie the Dawn. I remain your host, Chad, if you're E333. In this next match, I believe is a request from Dinefriend. Dinefriend versus Google Frog on Valis Mananaris. So, let's get started. Dinefriend going for the Light Vehicle Factory, while Google Frog is going for the Cloakybot Factory. And this is one of those weird maps where Cloakybot actually works well, despite its size. Despite the size of the map, I mean, the Cloakybots are obviously quite small. But, Light Vehicles... I would say are kind of the favorite here, just because it is a fast, flat map, and the only problem is they can't easily deal with the north and south, and the south is one of the bigger problems there. If you look at the pathing map, they can get around, but not that efficiently. On the other hand, with bots, it's just... they can get everywhere. There's a few specks of purple here and there, but they can basically go everywhere on the map, so that's a big reason for Cloakie being used here. Anyway, Google Frog. Setting up their economy quickly, as they always do, it's metal first, then get energy afterwards. Whereas, Dimefriend also going over the same thing, a little bit ahead on their economy construction, actually. And also a bit ahead on their defense construction. It looks like Google Frog got a bit more focused on setting up their opening units. While Dimefriend only had one dart, and that was about it. And now they have a few more, but yeah, they, Dimefriend getting ahead economically a bit faster, or at least at first they were. Now, actually, not so much. The, the, that defense cost did put them in a on a bit of a back foot. They've got to make that up, of course. Anyway, Google Frog looks like they are going to be setting up for a bit of a stronger attack over to the southern side of the map. They've got five glaives coming over here. The glaives do need to coordinate, but this is going to be painful. The defenders will not stop this. Oh, okay. I guess the dart came in and died. I came and see the corpse. But yeah, this... Five Glaives can easily overpower one defender. And actually, as it is, the Mason's getting out of position, so already Google Frog is going to be in a great spot just at the start of this match. Dimefriend, on the other hand, they have a Scorcher over to the north. It's not doing anything yet, though. <clears throat> anyway, Google Frog going in for... Oh, unfortunately, a bit of a desync on the units there. This will not work. These Glaives will... Uh, Actually, they should be able to get rid of one of the defenders. Like this one defender here, the Scorcher, is going to cause loads of headaches for them. And the important thing, though, is, is the Mason going to die? And one... Okay, that's a Metal Extractor down. The Mason, are you going to die? The answer is no. The Glaive is instead going straight for the Scorcher. I don't know why. At least going for some Metal Extractors here and there. That's good. That's not enough, unfortunately. And Diamond able to get away with only losing a couple Metal Extractors. As it is, they're ahead on Metal. So it's not a big deal. They've been expanding the entire time and actually are accessing. So ultimately, that didn't do a huge amount of damage. On the other hand, some damage here from Dimefriend, able to get rid of one of Google Frog's workers. Actually, come to think of it, okay, the Scorcher did, did die, but the Conjurer goes down, so Google Frog losing one of their constructors, while Dimefriend only losing a few metal extractors. This is definitely in favor of Dimefriend. The only thing they need to do right now is actually use that build power. It's Mason. Select the Mason, right click on the factory. It's that simple. Or do that. Build something else. That works too. Just use that metal. You've got loads of it and more than enough energy to use it with. So you're good. Just build stuff. Build all the things. Anyway. Google Frog. Managing to get their expansion more or less on track. Being a bit more aggressive too. Dimefriend focusing a bit more on the... On the stuff over here at the top, bottom... Inside their opening section, their opening plateau. Google Frog, on the other hand, trying to go to the, to the center of the map, and we'll see how that works out. It looks like Dimefriend just shooing away some of Google Frog's harassers, which actually isn't working too well. Google Frog able to take a Scorcher for free. And at the same time, there's, there's a nice secondary attack, but this is, once again, not greatly positioned. This is a scouting force. This is not going to be able to do a huge amount of damage, but it will be able to see that Dimefriend is expanding to the north, Kind of slowly, but still expanding to the north. And Google Frog is just... All they seem to be doing right now is trying to set up scouting. That's a very wise thing to do. So Google Frog has loads of information about where Dimefriend is, where Dimefriend is planning to expand, where Dimefriend has expanded. Basically, Google Frog has a complete picture of Dimefriend's current economic and territorial position. Or almost complete. They might be uncertain about these metal extractors over in the southwest. But everywhere else, they have complete knowledge of this. Whereas Dimefriend doesn't. I mean, they have some knowledge that Google Frog expanded slowly to the north, but they 
basically don't have anything in place. The Scorcher over to the south, or the Scorchers over to the south, both of them, they will be able to stop that from being the case. However, they need to be moving. They need to keep moving. This, this needs to happen right now. Dimefern needs to not be paying attention to something else. There we go. Good. The Scorchers are moving. That's, that was perfect. That's exactly what needs to happen because if they can find that these metal extractors are built, they're totally undefended. And if they get really lucky and find the Conjurer here, boy, are they going to be happy. I mean, as it is, Google, Google Frog has already lost a worker, and I don't believe they've retaliated on that. I don't see any Masons dead. I haven't seen any Masons look like they're about to die. And Google Frog losing several metal extractors right away. And obviously that means that there's something being built. Something's building those things, but I don't think Dimefriend is going to care about that. It looks like they're going for the main base instead, trying to find all the undefended metal extractors. Because they don't know that there's a worker right there. Like, they don't know that the worker just, just came by, that just built stuff. So that makes sense. Still, they managed to basically strip 10 metal per second off of Google Frog's economy in the span of a minute. That is effective. So right now, Dimefriend about 10 metal per second ahead of Google Frog, and this they need. Google Frog is a very strong player, even behind. So, this is kind of necessary. Dimefriend is going to be losing a few, well, their entire rating force, actually, not a few units. I mean, it is a small rating force, but still, did not manage to get out of there alive. Still, with the amount of... Oh, with the amount of Scorchers coming in here, this is not going to... Oh, it might be a comp dive. I don't know. Commanders did get a massive health buff, but it doesn't look like it's going to be quite enough. Oh, it is just barely. That was the that was the health buff. Engineer Commanders... Oh, wait, no, was it? No, that can't have been. The Engineer Commanders would have had 3,000 or so HP. I don't think this version... This is an older version of the game. I think this is before the Commander health buff. So it was actually just the upgrades. Google Frog's earlier upgrade saved their Commander. And the light, well, the lightning rifle in particular. I mean, that's, that's pretty obvious. The fact that they had a lightning rifle to get rid of the Scorchers efficiently definitely saved them. Anyhow, with with that being said, Google Frog is actually doing an okay job setting things up. I mean, they're getting to the south. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to get this area over to the south here to help them take the southern expansions, use that to build their economic base, and then attack from there. As it is, though, they might just be able to do enough damage with the Glaives that it won't even matter. And here, actually, this might kill... The There's a Mason possibly dying! I mean, it's still... No, it's like one Conjurer to no Masons right now. Yeah, this is this is a dead mason. We finally have a dead mason. Google Frog finally evens out the worker thing, though. It is not a question of, oh, you killed so many workers. It is a question of when they died. Earlier is better. Anyway, as it stands, Google Frog is going to be losing more stuff again. Losing yet another conjurer. So... Still not great, and that was a Conjurer in a much more important position as well. I mean, the Mason was in a good spot, but the Conjurer here was going to be taking the entire southern side. And it's now dead! And it's really far away from the main base. The Mason over here has other Masons nearby that are idle that could just replace it. And also the factory is just slightly north, so... Definitely more effective for Dime Friend right now. And Google Frog... Again, their commander getting under pretty heavy attack, but this shouldn't be a problem. The Stardust is almost done. Almost dead as well. There it goes. It doesn't manage to do all that much damage, but hey, it did manage to at least distract a little bit. Pushes back the Ravagers. So Dimefriend not able to do as much damage as they would have liked, and getting pushed behind as well. Their their economy is now five week well five per second ish. Well, it's reclaim. Okay, it's about even with Dime, with Google Frogs. It's entirely reclaim that makes the difference right now. That might not last long though. Google Frog with the scythes over to the north should be able to, if they play it smart get around all the defenses, and then go to the metal extractors behind them. But it looks like Google Frog is a little bit more timid than that, realizing that they should probably deal with the Ravagers, or at least be mindful of them. But it doesn't look like the Scythes are going to deal with that. Nope, never mind. Scythes are going in again. They just wanted to regroup. And this is where I'm a bit confused why Dimefriend is not going for more levelers. I mean, the Ravagers are a strong unit, yes, but the levelers are pretty much necessary to get rid of Glaives. And I mean multiple levelers. You'd need about four or five to get rid of that many Glaives. Not because they don't have great splash damage, but because they don't have very great rate of fire. 
So one thing about levelers, you have to actually have quite a few of them for them to be effective as riot units because they fire so slowly, or fire so infrequently. And there's the size over to the north. That's exactly what I expected. Not a whole lot of damage being dealt before they... Well, never mind. This is actually where they could come in handy. The defenders will be able to deal a bit of damage, but not enough to kill. Thankfully, for the size, the damage got spread out quite a bit. So the defender's down. Google Frog able to take out pretty much everything here. Dime Frame's not going to be able to save this in time. Definitely not the Metal Extractors. The Solar Collectors, maybe. But at this point, it's not working out too well. The one advantage that Dime Frame has, though, is their production is actually pretty on point. They have enough build power set up so far that they're actually using all the metal they have. Whereas Google Frog, they are accessing quite a lot. They need to have that dealt with pretty soon. Excuse me. Anyway, so yeah, with Google Frog set up there, that will be... I mean, that'll be something they're able to take care of eventually. It's not terrible excess, but it does mean that Dying Friend has had a lot more unit production happening. So the units are still in a much stronger position than they would be otherwise. Now, Google Frog, are they going to go for air defenses? I don't see any signs of that, but I'm pretty sure they saw that there was a rapier coming down over to the north side of the map. No, apparently not. They do not know. They don't suspect. And now they'll know. There it is. There's the rapier coming out to deal with the sides, And not able to spot them, but the sides obviously able to spot the rapier on account of the rapier being generally visible. So I expect Google Frog will be setting up some razors very shortly, if not already. And I don't see any right now. I mean, the relevant story is obviously these Ravagers over to the south trying to get rid of what they can from Google Frog's economy. But really, Google Frog's position right now is primarily due to their position over in the front. Like, that massive front-line position. Like, they have this big spear, they can just funnel units in. It's difficult to deal with them, so the units are essentially being deployed from the midpoint of the map. Whereas, all of Dying Friends units are being deployed from their main base. And then have to walk through the south area, which right now is undefended. But that's still a bit of a long path for vehicles, and it's also something that Google Frog can predict. And just defend that area. Especially since, as mentioned, Google Frog has this whole setup. However, it's kind of frail, and I'm a bit surprised that Dying Friend isn't trying more to deal with that. Granted, if they weren't distracting the Zeus's, the Zeus's would be over-defending that entire line, but still, it seems like a good place to start breaking those lines, because it makes it a bit harder for Google Frog to get through. I mean, if Dying Friend can continue to threaten it, that's the thing. And clearly, they did not have enough units to actually maintain a present, a clear and consistent threat in that section. Let alone the air. I mean, they couldn't even get close to it. That's the thing. So one Ravager doing everything he can. Dying without really accomplishing all that much. Oh, never mind! There's the... Well, the second Lotus. That, that'll finish it off. There we go. It's... Managed to kill a Lotus. It was something. And there's... Ah, there's the Razor. Which... Thankfully for the Rapiers, was already slowed in production. And, I don't know, Banshee's on top of that. So, hey, there's that one razor, but Google Frog never builds just one razor. And there's, in fact, one over to the south, and another one over in their main base being constructed already. So, while that one to the north is definitely broken, that opens a lot of Google Frog up. And at this point, Dyfriend is already 10 metal again ahead of their opponent. This is not what Google Frog wants. Dyfriend, at this point, not using the build power. They could just put another unit in the gunship plant. That would definitely do a lot of good. Not doing so, though. And the Gremlins for Google Frog coming in, which... Not sure how much that's going to actually accomplish, seeing as Dime Friend... I mean, they're not attacking the main base. That's good that way. But at the same time, the Banshees are just going where the Gremlins aren't. And that's all they need to do. And I'm thinking, oh, they almost broke up that Defender. I mean, the Defender's not a huge threat. Th that can be taken care of any time. The important thing is to get rid of this front area here. If that can be destroyed, if that can get rid of the staging area for Google Frog, if Google Frog's commander can go down, that'd be nice. It's not a huge deal. It wouldn't make a huge difference. I mean, Dime Friend is the one actually accessing right now, not Google Frog. Dime Friend really needs to build more energy. And they aren't. They, they sort of are, but not really. It, it, I don't know. The commander's idle. It doesn't have to be. At any rate, Google Frog's commander, however, if it does go down, that'll be another, another blow. And there it is! And, okay, Google Frog losing their commander... With that, only 22 metal left from about 30, which is what you'd expect because commanders do generate 4 per second and had some of the reclaim going on there. But at this point, Google Frog, that's the big thing. They're way behind economically. Dying Friend is able to win economically, but Google Frog has just been able to maintain their position just through 
smart unit choice and smart unit positioning and the fact that they have this center position that they can pretty easily get to. Not much is going to stop them along the way. Like, they staked out a position in the center of the map, and while they lost their commander, they have enough units in the front lines that'll still keep that position, along with the size and the back lines that take out Dimefront's commander and make all that excess metal go away. That's 500 metal they'll never see again. I mean, it would have been at least something to get themselves out of the excess, and I pointed that out in a previous match, how it's, you know, it can at least get yourself out of that hole a little bit by spending the metal that you have. But no, Google Frog got rid of Dimefront's commander at the best possible time, storage-wise. But it's going to come down really to, to positioning. Dimefront has been losing so many units, but they do have all these levelers and defenders. Four levelers, sorry, la ravagers. Like four levelers and ten ravagers that are going to be coming together pretty quickly. Well, eventually. I imagine they'll probably get up to about 20 units or so and then push out. Ah, there we go. There's the Banshees. Getting rid of yet another Conjurer. So Dimefriend, able to get rid of that. There's a lot here that's actually been gotten rid of. So, Dimefriend, with two and a half times Google Fox economy, they can only pretty much lose this game at this point if Google Frog either does a super decisive push, because it hasn't been that long. Google Frog can still reclaim their way into a more favorable position. But they still have to do that. And they are getting some workers to do that. And they have a caretaker nearby as well, though it's a little bit out of range to actually deal with anything. The problem, however, is that as it... Oh, no, Dime Throne, what are you doing? You're getting inside of Google Frog's base to give them metal when they don't... Ah, that's exactly what they need. Donating metal. Okay, so that's 120 metal. Actually, 360 metal donated to Google Frog to get rid of two per second. So, I mean, if you can avoid having them get that metal extractor for three minutes without losing any more units in their base, then great. Although, the more important story is the front side. The front line finally being taken down. Dying Friend pushing out with all those units that I've mentioned before. And Google Frog realizing there's not much they can do for that. Throwing in the towel. And that is game. I feel like I should probably stop pointing out who requested matches that are requested, because it's probably going to make it obvious who won. I mean, of course you request this match. You beat Google Frog. I mean, you did a good job beating Google Frog. A lot of it came down to proper economy usage and the fact that early constructors were destroyed, so it made the early economy a bit weaker, and then the economy was overall stronger for Dimethroid. Though, admittedly, the excess near the end wasn't that respectable, but still. For a 20-minute game, that's actually not bad for excess. Apparently, it's zero. No, I mean, it's like 2,000, 2,500 or so. Oh, wait. Oh, that's a weird bug. Apparently, excess becomes zero. Like, the excess graph just sets it zero if there's no storage. Okay, that's a thing. That's a, that's a thing. Hopefully, Google Frog watches this. Yeah, it looks like there's a lot of things that get messed up when storage is gone. No, oh, metal income makes sense. Metal income's right. That's correct. But metal reclaim is wrong. Metal excess is wrong. Energy income... Actually, that's also... What the heck? This gets weird sometimes. I don't know why it's zero, but whatever. That might have been an earlier version. And that's It's an earlier version that might have been fixed. I shouldn't harp. But yeah, anyway. Like I said, well done. Good use of economy. Google Frog setting up in the center helped a great deal to keep Google Frog in the game. But I almost feel like a proxy factory there wouldn't have been a bad idea. Just to really take the fight to Dimefriend. I'm actually kind of surprised how well Dimefriend held the southern side when it's light vehicles. They have a much harder time dealing with that area, but they managed to do it. So that was really impressive. Anyway. Next match is going to be between North Chilean G and Lamadeus on La Isla Bonita. So, that'll be up in a couple minutes. Stay tuned.